This movie begins with the appearance of an art student named Pico, who was so talented at painting. He made extra money by forging paintings by famous painters then sold it to his friend, Yusuf Hamdan or we call him Yukup, as a mediator. Yukup is a college student and at the same time a hacker, a skilled crypto trader and a businessman who sells fake branded items. He helped Pico to sell his painting to a curator called Dini. She then will sell the fake painting at the auction at the sky-high price. Pico has a girlfriend named Sarah, a college student and also a martial art athlete who has a goal to become a national athlete so she could keep her scholarship. She lived with her grandmother and was a backbone of her family. Her grandmother doubted about the future of her relationship with Pico, considering that Pico was just a painter who solely relied on his painting to survive. Let alone, they were struggling and only had a year left, before they had to move out from the public housing they used to live in. But she convinced her grandma that she would find the solution, no need to worry about that. Pico and Sarah went on a date. They had a little argument about why his friendship with Yukup was always there in between their relationship. She felt jealous that Pico was closer to him and Yukup seemed to know everything about Pico more than her. Pico's father, Buddyman, was in prison because of his involvement in a bank robbery case and was framed by his partner. Pico went to see him in prison almost every week and sometimes Yukup would ask about how his father was doing in prison. Pico then told him that a lawyer was going to reopen the case and recommend a retrial at the Supreme Court, but he asked for a very expensive fee, around two billions, for the job. Yukup then told him about the fake painting of Widiat that he forged and sold to Dini at 50 million had been sold at 900 million at the auction. She made a huge profit from it and no one till this day knows that the painting was fake. So Yukup proposed another project to forge another painting and he promised to offer it at a good and fair price to Dini. He thought that three paintings would be enough to get two million and Pico could reopen his father's case. Meanwhile at the next scene, a policewoman just reported about allegedly painting forgery to her boss. She said that she received a second case of alleged painting forgery. The first case was a Fandi's painting and the second one was Widiat. To confirm the authenticity of the painting, the National Gallery needed to invite a researcher from Belgium, but they did not have the budget to do so. Her boss then told her that they couldn't take this case, he thought that they don't have the capacity to investigate the fake paintings. Next we are introduced to a young man named Gopher and his younger brother named Tuk Tuk who live with his father. They rent a place to Pico to be used as a car repair shop. Gopher is a mechanic, while his younger brother Tuk Tuk is good at driving cars and loves to race in wild car races. That night, both Gopher and Tuk Tuk, without their father's permission, participated in a wild car race. In the middle of the race, suddenly there was a problem with the clutch of the car, so they lost the race and ran out of their money for betting that night. In the next scene, we see Pico and Yukup meet Dini to discuss their new project to make fake paintings. At the beginning of the meeting Yukup emphasized to her that what they needed was more than just the money but also asked for a fair share. Dini asked Pico to forge a painting of the maestro Ranansale, namely the arrest of Prince Daiponegoro. Hearing Dini's request, Pico said he couldn't do it, because he was afraid of being jailed. If he did it, it was not counterfeiting but making replicas that had to be made as similar and detailed as possible. Yukup offered her two billion for the painting, and she agreed. Then she asked that the painting must be done in a month. Pico explained to Yukup that the painting of Prince Daiponegoro's arrest is more than a painting, Despite the complexity of the colors and the need for high technique, there are many emotions and symbols of Radin Saleh shown on the painting to protest against the fraudulent arrest of Prince Daiponegoro. This painting was made elegantly and it seems, Radin Saleh put his special sign on the painting so we could clearly see Daiponegoro's rebellious expression towards the people who were going to arrest him. This painting is a symbol of resistance. With his skill as a hacker, Yukup managed to break into a server that stored data about Prince Daiponegoro and helped Pico to get the painting's latest restoration data in Germany in 2012. Accompanied by Yukup, Pico began to work on Radin Saleh's painting project, The Arrest of Prince Daiponegoro. Finally, Radin Saleh's painting that Pico made has been done, and it looks a lot like the original work. Pico and Yukup felt happy, and while celebrating their success, Sarah came unexpectedly. Sarah was mad at Pico. She said that Pico cares more about Yukup than about her. Then Pico explained to her that he needed money, about two billion, so he could reopen his father's case and do a retrial at the Supreme Court. Yukup just helped him find a job by making a fake Radin Sala painting. This was the only way he could get the two billion, the money he needed. Later on, Pico told Sarah why he hid this from her. 
He was afraid that his problems would burden her and that might make her couldn't focus on her training to be a national athlete and lose her scholarship. Hearing Pico's confession, Sarah finally apologized for her misunderstanding. Pico, Yukup and Sarah went together to meet Dini for the handover transaction of the painting. Dini came with her crew to the appointment place. Pico then showed her the painting he made and she was satisfied with the result. But suddenly a middle-aged man came out of the car. The three of them were shocked when they saw that the person was Pramani, a former president. It turned out that Dini had been working for Pramani all this time. Pramani was amazed by Pico's work. That fake painting looked exactly the same as the one displayed in his former office at the State Palace. However, Pramani made a more attractive offer that he would increase it to 17 billion if they managed to exchange the fake painting with the original one that was in his former office at the State Palace. But Pico refused, he didn't want to steal, 2 billion was all he needed. But Pramani has other ways to get what he wants. He showed him a video of his father, Buddyman, who was in prison. He threatened him that he was able to make his father suffer even longer until he dies in prison. He said that Pico had no choice. Then he told him that in three weeks from today, there will be an annual exhibition where all the collections of the presidential palace will be on display at the National Gallery. They will have the chance to exchange the original painting when it was transferred. Pramani then gave Rico 500 million. He said that Pico could use the money to recruit his crew for this mission. They felt trapped in this situation but they also had to save Pico's father's life, so they didn't have any option but to agree and to do Pramani's plan. Then they had a discussion. If the plan succeeded, they could share the money. They started to make a strategy plan. Permani gave them a company profile from several delivery services, but they did not know which delivery company service the presidential palace office used to work with. Using his hacking skill, Yukup tried to find all the data they needed to make this plan work. Then Yukup told them that the delivery service which the presidential palace office used to work with, was using the same route during their service for almost 12 years. So he needed to know how the traffic was all along the route to find the safest spot for them to exchange the paintings. To do so, they need to find a skilled driver and a mechanic for this plan to be successful. We move to another scene where Gopher and Tuk Tuk just got scolded by their father for messing up his BMW car which they used to race. Their father asked them to repair the car, but both of them didn't have any money to pay the repairing costs. Pico took advantage of their problem to scout both Gopher and Tuk Tuk to join his plan, stealing Radensale's painting. Feeling helpless to earn some money, they then agreed to join the team. Pico explained to his team that if they executed this plan successfully, each of them would get 3 billion. Both Gopher and Tuk Tuk were really excited when they heard the amount of money they would get. They would use the money to build their workshop. They began their plan that night by breaking into the shipment company office to look for the company data including the rundown sheet of the shipment and the employee's personal files. They were caught red-handed by the security guards, but finally they managed to escape and successfully got all the data they needed. The next day, Pico and his team members were evaluating their work last night. They agreed that they need an additional member, who has a privilege, a leverage, has a resourceful thing to make a difference, a smarter one, who would fully support the success of their plan. For that one additional member, Yukup recommended Fela. She was a smart college student, a conglomerate's daughter and also a bookie who was so skilled in negotiating. Later on, Yukup went to meet her, he seduced her to bet in a challenging adventure for 2-5 billion reward and then she agreed to join the team. When Pico was describing their plan to Fela, she thought the plan was well made, but she found some holes here and there. She said they needed to be more detailed and fixed it, so it would run smoothly. Fela then told the team her idea. She needed two people to infiltrate the shipment company by disguising themselves as an employee, so Gopher and Tuk Tuk were assigned to do the task. They would apply for the job at the shipment company using a fake diploma made by Pico, and Fela's mom would use his connection, so both of them would get the job easily. In the end, Gopher and Tuduk got the job at the shipment company, as the driver and they started their plan. They began the plan, starting from modifying the shipment truck and making it look like just the regular shipment truck of the company, they did in a very detailed way. Pico was in charge of coloring the car, Gopher was in charge of faking the chassis serial number, and lastly, Tuk Tuk was assigned to fool one of the drivers, so he could take charge of the painting delivery. At the end of the day, both Tuk Tuk and Gopher were assigned to deliver the painting. We moved to another scene at the police station. The policewoman we saw at the beginning of the movie was assigned to escort the painting delivery. The heist of Radin Salis is about to begin. Each of the team members was assigned their own task. 
Gopher and Tuk Tuk would drive the shipment car that brought the original work from the presidential palace. Pico and Sarah drove the fake shipment car that brought the fake painting, meanwhile Fella drove a luxury car and acted as bait and Yukup was responsible for controlling the CCTV camera and at the same time, led this mission. Their mission began with Fella who pretended that her car broke down and caused long jams all along the tunnel. When the policemen saw there were two shipping trucks, they were becoming suspicious. Later on, the police caught their mission and found out that there was one fake shipping truck, then they hit that truck. Pico and Sarah were surprised and panicked. They got off of the car and ran away from the police chase as soon as possible. Yukup ran to Fella's car to save himself. Gopher made it to run from the chase, but unfortunately, Tuk Tuk couldn't. He got stuck behind the wheel and was arrested by the police. Fella and Yukup were hiding in a safe house, but she felt suspicious why they didn't find anything about the escort in Pramati's data. On the other side Sarah was enraged at Pico for leaving her behind when the police chased them, meanwhile Gopher felt angry at Pico for asking him and his brother to join this mission. He got more angry because Tuk Tuk was arrested. At the police station, Tuk Tuk was interrogated, but he didn't say anything, he kept his mouth closed. The police knew already about Yukup, they already got his identity. They assumed that his mission was not an ordinary one, this is not about stealing the painting but to exchange the original work for the fake one. The police was then informed that the National Gallery asked about Radnasale's painting and demanded to process the investigation as soon as possible so it won't delay the opening ceremony of the painting exhibition as ordered by the State Palace. But the police had no idea how to differentiate which one is the original painting and which one is the fake. They got each of the paintings from each truck. Both trucks were identical, the color, the chassis serial number are all the same. The Gallery National spokesperson suggested the police request an assist from the State Palace's curator. So then they sent the official letter to the State Palace asking for a curator to come checking the both paintings. The day after, Dini came to the police station as a representative from the State Palace to check both paintings. She then labeled one of the paintings as the original work and it could be brought to the National Gallery, and she told the police that she should bring the fake one, under the premise that there is a special procedure to eliminate fake paintings, moreover it was a state asset. Move to the next scene where Pico was so sad while meeting his father in prison. He didn't say anything to him when his father asked why he looked so sad, then he told him to just go his way, whatever happened, do not trust people easily. Pico went to the painting exhibition in the National Gallery, where he saw Radin Saleh's painting. He was so surprised when he saw the painting, he knew that it was the fake painting he made, not the original work. Dini brought the original painting to Pramati's house. She did this for her own good. Both Pramati and Dini conspired together in this matter. For Pramati, it's not about getting the original painting, but he wanted to take revenge on the country that has taken away his political career and his son, Rama. Pico, Fela, Yukup and Gopher held another meeting again. Pico told them that the painting displayed at the National Gallery wasn't the original one but it was the painting he made. Pramati had made them as bait. They had an argument about their next moves, but Gopher was so worried about his brother Tuk Tuk who was in jail. Pramati came to see Buddyman in prison and praised his perfect plan, he then said the payment he promised him, 2 billion, had been transferred to Poltak, the lawyer. He said he ordered Poltak to reopen his case, but Pramati couldn't keep his promise about providing him a Supreme Court judge, he said the chance to win the case was so small without the judge's intervention. Buddyman was so annoyed, he then threatened Pramati that he was able to tell people about the painting, but Pramati had a wild card in his hands. He then told him, if he dared to tell the world about the painting, his son, Pico would be imprisoned. We went back again to the meeting between Pico and his friends. They were still discussing the next moves they should do to free Tuk Tuk. But, in the middle of their meeting, Tuk Tuk came. He was released by the police. All of them were mad at Pramani for setting them up. He must have underestimated them as just a bunch of kids. They made up their mind, they will fight against Pramani. Meanwhile on the other side, Bunnyman successfully escaped from the prison by the help of his lawyer, Poltak. Yukup tried to find Pramani's weakness, his son Rama, Pramati resigned as president last year, because the bribery case involving Rama was exposed by the media. To block the news from spreading out, he voluntarily stepped down from his position. Rama was a big-time playboy, so Sarah was assigned to seduce him. 
There will be a party in two weeks to celebrate Permani's birthday. As usual, Permani will celebrate his birthday with a big party. Sarah managed to get close to Rama and introduced herself while she was in a cafe and Rama even invited her to dinner. We went back to Pico and the team at their home base where they were making a plan to break into Permani's house. Yukup convinced them that the painting must be hidden somewhere and guarded strictly by security teams. They needed someone to get access to Permani's house and to find where the painting was. Pico and Yukup were in charge of this work. To back up their plan, they need someone disguised as an event organizer, and Fella was the right person to do the work. She told her mother that she wanted to have a small business while finishing her studies to have an event organizer agency. Her mom said yes and supported her business by buying an event organizer agency that was in charge of Permani's birthday party. Fella managed to get all of Permani's birthday event files, from the decoration, scheduled to the catering. By Fella's recommendation, Yukup and Pico finally worked at the event organizer agency, while Fella was in charge of its operations. Move to the next scene, where Gopher and Tuk Tuk were working to modify the sound system to be a tool that can produce smokes which can be controlled remotely. Yukup was in charge of the security system, so he could control all the CCTV cameras in Permani's house. Permani's birthday party that we've been waiting for is here. All of them were ready to act according to their respective duties. At the party, Sarah wore a fancy dress pretending to be Rama's partner and the special guest at the party that night. Yukup tried to control the security system and the CCTV cameras while serving as an employee of the event organizer agency. Together with Pico, they were trying to find the location where the painting was. Gopher and Tuk Tuk were in charge of the sound system division and to put the box which could cause the smokes using a remote control. Lastly, Fella would act as the event coordinator and in charge of distracting the security guards and leading the night's mission. They finally found where Radin Saleh's painting was, it was in the pavilion room then Yukup and Pico went to the room immediately. Gopher gave the signal to the team, 10 minutes before the smoke bomb was activated, but suddenly the remote control was not working. Knowing that their plan was not running as they wanted it to be, they moved to another plan, this time Sarah was the one who will lead the mission. Sarah tried to provoke Rama's anger, by beating him while he was trying to hold her waist. Rama was so mad at her, so he told his men to beat her up. While Sarah was in the fight with Rama's men, Gopher tried to fix the smoke bomb manually and he made it to make the smoke bomb activate. The house alarms went off and caused chaos around the house. Yukup and Pico finally took Radin Sali's painting out of the house and then put it inside the car and left Pramani's house. On their way, Yukup and Pico were screaming excitedly for bringing Radin Sali's painting successfully. But all of a sudden, a fast-moving car crashed into their car. From inside the car a man wearing a mask came out and attacked them. It turned out that the man in the mask was Pico's father, Buddyman. Pico was shocked and did not believe the situation. He felt angry and at the same time, sad and annoyed by what his father did to him. Buddyman then told Pico that Permani had framed them. That painting was the only thing that could save his life. He asked Pico to forgive him, then took Pico's car with the painting inside, then left him. While Pico cried about his fate, Yukup comforted him. He said that Pico still had him, his best friend and other friends as his family. Afterward, Fella's car came to pick up Pico and Yukup. While on his way, Buddyman checked the painting, and he was so surprised to find out that the painting inside the car was not Radin Saleh's painting but a painting of Yasser Arafat. It turned out that Pico and his friends were working out on two missions at the same time. Fella was the one who brought Radin Saleh's painting in her car, while Pico and Yukup car brought Yasser Arafat's painting. Back at Permani's house, he was so mad to find that Radin Saleh's painting was stolen from him, and he ordered all his men to find the culprit behind this heist. Dini called Yukup to say that she was impressed by their skill. She saw both of them at Permani's house while they were taking the painting, she then made a very interesting offer to them. She said that there is a prospective buyer who would pay 10 billion for the painting. Dini's offer made all of them cheered up and felt extremely happy, 